Let's begin. Tie the first 45 inch rope folded in half over your dovo with the reverse lark's head knot. Try to find the middle of the dovo for this one. The next 45 inch rope Let's fold it in half to begin with, and then measure it around. So you will be tying uh, double half hitch knots around this knot, but you also will have to have some length to tie it around. So this side of the rope should be shorter than the other one. So this one is longer. So. Let's tie it up with the reverse Lark's head knot. Right here. And with the longer rope, with this rope as the lead, start tying double half hitch knots around. One. Two. One, two. Okay. On this side, now bring your rope, the tail, over the doll from the back and through the loop. Now from the front and through the loop. We have our first row. The second one will be the same manner. So you will need shorter rope on this side and longer on the other side. Okay. We repeat the process here with the longer one as the lead. Start tying your knots. Now when we get to the middle, you notice that we have a much bigger gap right here. If I'm starting tying the knot, you see, it kind of goes too far. So we'll need to add another rope right here to make sure that all your knots are even. So here we have 32 inch rope folded in half. Bring it under the lead, over, through the loop, and this is your reverse Lark's head knot. Continue on this side Go slow so your knots line up properly. Okay, same thing here from behind and through the loop. From the front over and through the loop. Okay. Now we are ready to add our beads. To add the beads, I used a piece of wire that I just bended to create the loop. It is easier to pull the strings through this way. Sometimes the holes in these beads are not big enough, so it's kind of tough, but here you go. And just continue doing the same with all your hanging tails. Now that I added the beads, I figured that they were too tight, so I removed the ones from the very top um, strands. 
So to continue, we will add another 45 inch rope and we do the same thing. We will measure the larger, longer strand to go on this side. And I usually just go by the length of the rest of the ropes that are there that will give me the indicator how long my short tail should be. All right, and we will continue making double half hitch knots here. Now that our semicircle becomes larger, we will need to add two more ropes somewhere like we did here in the middle and you will see um, for you it might be different for me it looks like I might need to add one right there but this one will be all right yeah you see that would not look really good so I will add another rope right here and this time it is 23 inches i believe okay with the reverse double head um lark's head knot there you go and continue and you will need to add one more on the other side when you pass the middle And we're going to add one more 45 long 45 inches long cord and make one more row of double half hitch knots this time i will not add any additional ropes in the middle i believe it will just be fine without okay so you see i still have the rope right there but it looks like it would be too tight so i'm going to skip it and continue Okay, we didn't need to add any ropes in this road. row. We will continue with adding three ropes of different color of your choice. And these are cut to nine feet long. I find the middle and just add with the reverse Lark's head knot all three. Okay, now let's begin making our diamonds. Again, it's double half hitch knots. You use the middle rope as the lead and start tying, pointing your rope where you want to go. If you point it this direction, that's where you want to will go. But if you point it down, you will go down. Now another middle as the lead <clears throat> and again we are pointing this direction. With the middle four we are going to tie a square knot. 
I assume you know how to tie a square knot, but there you go. Don't pull too tight so you have a little bit um, of rope showing on top. So your square knot appears in the middle. Now we're going to go the opposite direction. Now this is your lead and we're going to go this direction down. From the other side, this is your lead and you go this direction down. Now, I will be continuing with this lead going this direction down again. So here to remember, if you want to your spiral go this way, you will continue with this lead. If you wanted to go in the opposite direction, you can continue with this lead. At this point, I don't think it matters, so I will just go and continue with this lead going down. Now, something to remember here, when you are working around, you see, when you start going around, you will need these parts to be longer than the parts right here. And you will see in a moment what I mean. So with this lead, continue down, pretty much down, not like this, but down, almost pointing to the floor. So you have longer parts right here. Now we want to continue this um, going into this direction, right? But as I said, because we are going to go around, do you see how much shorter these two will be? So keep that in mind and continue measuring throughout. That's what I usually do. I make these pretty tight. See, I'm pointing my lead almost parallel to the floor. And I want this part to be pretty short. looks kind of uneven but it will look just fine when you continue. So right here again we're going to make a square knot. And continue with your spiral into this direction. So we're going to make two double half hitch knots. And again, remember where your lead is pointing, that's what you want to go. So I want to make it this way. Now this is my lead and I will continue going down. Okay, and here we come to the part again when I will want these two to be longer and these two shorter. So when I'm working with my lead right here, I will make sure to point all the way down to make these two strands longer.
Okay, and on this side, and measure continuously because if you notice that this is tagging, you might want to untie and redo it. But here, I want this to be probably right here. So my lead, again, goes almost parallel to the floor. And this will be pretty short. Now the square knot. And continue this manner. You will have to finish this one and then two more to go on this side. But again, remember, these inner cords right here must be shorter than these ones on the outside. So here you see I ended up with a lot of the rope left, but my shortest cord is about, what, probably a foot or a little bit more, probably a foot. So I would suggest perhaps instead of nine feet, you can do eight and a half. So your shortest rope will be about this long, but you need it to tie it to the dovel. So, and this is how we're going to do that. We're not going to do it the same manner as we, uh, we were doing here because you see, we have only one, two, three, four, five, six uh, strands here. And if we will be doing the same knot as here, we will end up with 12 and we don't want that. So instead, we will send this rope, these two, over from behind and pull the strands around like this. And we will tie it on the end and it will create the illusion of the reverse lark's head knot. So again here, I hope my camera is in focus. Um, send it over the door from behind one goes on this side, if I can put it there. And the other stays on this side. So when you tie them up, on the back, they will look like reverse light head knots. Again, this one goes on this side. And this one stays on this side. Now be sure not to pull them too tight and make sure that you have some play there. Okay, so I'm going to turn it around and just tie the knots on the other side. Okay, so this is a reverse and here are strands. This is the first two. I'm just going to tie them up. I'll tie them in double knots just to be sure they're not going to go anywhere. This is the second. And these are the longest. But not to worry, I will use this color for the fringe, so I will use these unused strands too. Now I'm just going to cut them right here. Voila. Now for our next part, you can leave it as is, but if you want little, little knobs here to show up, we can do this. 
So I'm going to pull two of these strands right above this part out right here and then through. Okay, now the same two strands I'm going to pull from behind in between right here. Now I'll send one on this side and the other one on this side. And on the back, I'm, I'm going to turn it around and tie them up in a knot there. But what happens, it will create this little interesting design. And as I said, you can leave it as is or you can make these. and. Do the same thing, pull two strands that are over this part here, over, through, in between, and send them on each side. Very pretty. So continue with these two and then I'll turn it around and show you how to tie the knot. Okay, so here is the back side and these are our strands that went over and around. So what I will do, I'll just tie a simple knot right here so they even out and don't create, you see how there's like a big hole. So it's probably not gonna be that big of a deal and you can leave it, but if you have a little gap with the next portion visible, then these will help um, to kind of be a background for you, for that gap. For the next part, I would like to add an accent right here, just between this portion and the portion that will go underneath. So I will be making a spiral pattern and I will measure the cord. So I'll have enough hanging right here. So I have enough to tie it up. And right here so I have enough to tie it up and that's will become my lead and this very long part will be wrapping around it so again reverse lark's head knot right here All right, now this is my lead and this is my wrapping cord. So I will start making loops. So the loop goes counterclockwise and I'll put the lead through. Counterclockwise and I put the lead through. You will notice if you keep doing that, this part will become unraveled like this. And you don't want that because it will be messy. So keep twisting it back. And again, a loop. And tie it up. A loop 
and pull it up. You can see it starts twisting on itself, which is good. Again, the loop, pull it through, the loop, and pull it through. So you don't have to measure this rope except for that part that I showed you right here and you can work straight from the spool because that way um, you can just use as much as you need and rather than cutting it too long or too short. Alright, just continue in the same manner until you got all the way right here. When you got all the way up here, we are going to do the same thing. <coughs> Send our strands over. and tie them on the back. For this last portion, I'll be using this dark navy cord. It's pretty dark, so I hope you can see it. But I attached four cords folded in half with the reverse like heads knot. And now I will be working with four cords on this side and four cords on this side and we will be making the fish bone pattern. So I will start with crisscrossing the middle two. Hold this as a lead and start working downwards creating double half hitch knots. Not really downwards, but sort of at an angle. Now we'll take this lead that I crisscrossed and we'll do the same thing going at an angle down that way. Hold this rope, you lead and always point to where you want to go. Now I will again crisscross the middle two and I will work with the right one to go and make two more double half hitch knots. I will not make the double half hitch knot with this one, only with these two. Okay, I will leave this be. Now I will take the one that I crisscrossed, don't confuse it with these, this one, and I create two double half hitch knots with these two ropes. And 
And again, these are already sort of crisscrossed. I will take the middle two. I will take the one that came from the first, and this one goes under. And I'll create just one double half hitch knot, leaving these alone. And repeat the same process on the other side. I will take this middle rope and create one double half hitch knot. Okay, so we have our first pattern. And remember how we did here? It will have to bend around and therefore you will have to remember that these parts will have to be shorter than these parts. So for our next section, again, we're crisscrossing the middle parts and again we're pointing down but more well, not down. At this point, we will be working more parallel to the floor to make this part shorter. You see, that's where you want to end up. So we will be making double half hitch knots all the way through with all three ropes. And I will keep it pretty close because I wanted to bend. Now we will repeat only again. This is your middle rope, don't confuse it with the rest. It's going to be your lead. Start making your knots. But you see how I'm pointing down? I want to end up somewhere right here. Okay, I think this will not pull and I'm leaving it pretty loose and pretty long. And therefore I will not tighten up too much. And besides, our fringe will go on these parts, so we want them to be enough. Okay. And continue the same way. So your middle crisscross, two double half hitch knots in this direction, two in the other. Here you just have to follow closely with your first row. This middle ones crisscross, one on this side. And one on the other. And so repeat in the same man manner until you go all the way around. Make these sections shorter and these ones longer. Now at some point it might feel like things going really wrong because you see how it's all twisted but if you continue just putting it against your previous layer here and just checking how it goes as long as this is not pushing or pulling and these parts are not sticking out too much you're doing just fine and at this point it's probably very uncomfortable to work on but what I do I just enjoy just park it right here so it's a little bit straighter and continue working but just being mindful of these parts being shorter all right so I came all the way around and now I will do the same thing I've done before with these um, parts 
put two cords over, one of them going on one side and the other is on the other side. And I will not tie them yet, I'll just make sure that nothing is pulling and everything works and looks the way it should. Okay, this is about right. And I will go ahead and tie them off on the back as I showed you before. I cut 12 inches long, 32 pieces of the same color as this. Remember we had some left over, so I used some of those and added some more. And now I will create the fringe by folding it in half and placing them into these little openings and I will be making lark's head knots because I want this part to be up front and not on the back. So one of these, each of these will go on each side right here and here and then three in each of these openings to create the fuller fringe. Just continue all the way around. All right, we're almost there. So I will cut these back fringe the longer pieces to match with the front and I will go ahead and brush my fringe the back the back fringe and the front fringe and then I will trim it again you can cut this fringe actually pretty short if you want to or you can leave it um, the same as the long fringe I think I probably will cut it right here just because I don't need it to go that far. I only need it to be sort of visible to this gap. So I will go ahead and trim it so it's easier to brush. And here's a little trick that I will show you. I brushed my French once and now I will use the steamer and I will steam the French. And uh, then I will brush it again and I might steam it again one more time and brush it again. This way your French will relax and it will not be curling as much over time as it would be. Now that my French is steamed and brushed twice, I will go ahead and trim it. And there you have it! Please be sure to tag me on Instagram if you end up making this mandala so I can see your creations. Thank you for watching.